might have gotten gotten um understanding and didn't fully get a full understanding because you know the bible does says wisdom is the principal thing but all i get and get a understanding okay so everybody here i oftentimes tell you i don't know everything i don't know everything but the word of god speaks it, yes, it is, it is a mystery, but the word of God is plain and it speaks exactly what needs to be done. And I, I, I this is not a one way I'm doing all the talking. No, if there's a I, if, if there is something that you want to really discuss, I want you to unmute yourself and we will we will try to address it according to the word. OK, now we will. Ten to time to time, it will lead to the understanding that we have been taught. And then also those three doctrines will kick in one way or another. So it's not an argument. It's not a debate. It's truly what the word of God is saying. Now, I will say this. And I thank God for those who are here. I want you to have an open mind. I want you to really, 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 okay, all right. Even if 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 I if I said something and I take you to a scripture, there might be another scripture to tie in to what we're saying. I embrace that. But we want to make sure we are on the point of what we're discussing. We don't want to go to uh, any other ideas which you've been taught to the point whereas it kind of strays away to the point that we're trying to lead to or where the Lord is leading us to according to his word, okay? Um, so I, I'm not saying um, what you've been taught is was wrong, but I'm saying search the scriptures because it takes time. And I'll be the first to tell you, there was some scriptures that I was told and if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, I would still be believing what I was taught when I was young. But we got to grow in grace, like Peter said. So please, 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 I want to make sure that we are in the word of God. Now, thank you, Holy Ghost. So these things will be up for, for discussion. But we just want to make sure we're staying in the word of God, okay? All right. Now, I do believe the last thing that we, I mean, it was, we had three questions, but the last thing that was brought up to discuss, and I'm praying that we all had a chance to delve, dive into it and to be able to uh, get in the word of God with it, was dealing with the baptism. I, I do believe um, somebody had put it up on last week about, they asked a question about the baptism. Do you prefer to be baptized in Jesus' name or in the under the uh, titles or Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Now, I want to read the scriptures. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, about the baptism, okay. 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 All right. Okay. All right. It's the question was asked, can we also talk about baptism? Okay. And it says, if you've been baptized, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, baptized in the past, do, do you need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name? Now, according to the scriptures, Matthew 28, 19. I'll give you a second. If you do have your Bibles, it's not. It's okay. But you can write them down so you can go back and, you know, we'll uh, speak more about this. Okay. And, and like I said, unmute yourself if you want to, you know, because this, 
this is not going to be overnight. This is not going to take two minutes. No, this is why you should study to show yourself approved. Okay. There are many of us that have, that have been saved for years still have questions. Me, myself, Lord, I'm searching the scriptures. I want you to show me. Um, okay, sir. Um, this is something that is very, very important. All right. And this is where a lot of people get misled. But I, I, I just want to read. And then we'll read a couple more scriptures. You know, to see what's being said. Now, many of you know this scripture, Matthew 28 and 19. We heard it so many times, but we're going to read it. And then we're going to go to Acts, the uh, second chapter. And there's a couple other uh, scriptures I want to touch on. But I want to hear from you. I, I really do. All right. And if you're looking for a yes or no answer from me, I'm only going to say what the Bible says. Okay. Acts, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Matthew 28, 19. And it says, go ye therefore and teach one, all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Uh, let's read the 20th verse. It says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I had commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Okay. I like where it says in that 20th verse, it says, teaching them to observe all things what." So ever I have commanded you, okay, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, okay. So everybody, we hear that he was giving them a commission or a commandment to go, okay, teach. Observe baptizing them. Okay. There's no discrepancy there, right? There is no argument. That's exactly what he told them what to do. Okay. Okay. Anybody, anybody have any questions concerning what we just read? Anybody? Anybody want to say anything? Cause I, cause we're gonna go into some other scriptures. Cause I, I mean, I do have a lot of them, but I see. I don't want to get to the point that we get not confused, but not really understanding what's being said here. Because we all must come into a understanding of what's being done. And what was said. Okay. All right. Thank God for you all listening here. Let's go to Acts. The familiar passages of scripture. Oh, do I need to read when it initially fell? When the Holy Ghost initially fell? On Peter, James, and John, and all those. Do do I need to really get into that? Uh, okay. Well, let's let's. I want to read. Uh, let's go to Acts one. No, that wouldn't really. Okay, hold on a second. Acts 1 and 5, it says, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Okay? If you go down to 
the A first, which is we preach all the time, but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and you shall be witness, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All right, now let's go to Let's go to the, uh, Acts 2. You, you all know about the mighty rushing wind. And they were all filled. That's Acts 2 and 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit had or Spirit gave them utterance. Okay. All right. Now, the rhetorical question. Acts 2.38. I, want you, I mean, if anybody wants to, you know, really get into it, uh, stop me. But I'm just reading what the Bible is saying, okay? Acts 2.38, it says, Then Peter said unto them, this is after he had received the gift of the Holy Ghost. He preached the first uh, message to the Jews. Mind you, I just want you all to, to hear that. This is to the Jews. Devout men, they came from all around the world. Praise God, Jews. They heard them speak in their language. But here's what Peter said after they asked, uh, men and brother, now, you know, what? Uh, okay, 37. Now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Okay. Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of... Do y'all see that? Let me see. Let me see. I got my iPad. I'm trying to work with my iPad too. Y'all pray for me. It says, <clears throat> let me let me read that 38 verse start. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. 39th verse. For the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Okay. We, we read what was said or what was the commission that was given to them in the book of Matthew. Okay, and really the book of Matthew was written to the Jews. It wasn't written to the church. All right, but the command, they had to go to Jerusalem and wait to be endued with power from on high. Okay, but yes, we see that they said to baptize, to be baptized in the Father, in the name of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We see that. Is there a question there that we can bring up at this time? Yes, you know why? Come on. Come on, Lady Carruthers. I see you got a lot here. Come on. Well, uh, so what I was just, um, what I was picking up was God commanded us to do this. So if yeah. he's commanding, he's not making a suggestion. He's right. not saying it's okay for you to do it. He's saying, this is what I want you to do. So if I'm commanding you to do it, then he's saying, this is what I want you to do. So that, that was you, what I got um, as I'm reading. Anybody else want to 
because I'm, I'm, I want to hear this because I'm tying in the word because the question is saying if you've been baptized under the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost in the past, do you need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name? So, but what um, we're oh, go ahead because you could go ahead because what I what I would want to reiterate this is where we'll start thinking. Okay, he 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 told them in Matthew, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, but when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost, what happened? What did they do? How did they do it? And what did Peter preach? I'm not preaching Peter. We're preaching what Jesus, when they received the gift, what they did. Okay? This is where we get a lot of misunderstanding. It's not what you think, it's what the Bible says, or even in action. So, there are many, is there, I'm not asking you to answer me, but do you know there's a lot of people that receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? Under the, under the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Do you know there's people that receive the gift of the Holy Ghost in Catholic churches? You, you're dealing, I'm not refuting, I'm, I'm just saying that if we're doing or following the acts of the apostles or the acts of the Holy Ghost, because some of your uh, Bibles, if you look in the book of Acts, some of them, the title says the acts of the apostles. Even though they were told in the book of Matthew, Their actions after the Holy Ghost came upon them, they were baptized, as Peter says, in his name. So and, uh, the question was asked uh, Do you need to be rebaptized? You got the Holy Ghost? Why? As we are following the acts of the apostles, we're bearing you as the acts of the apostles. Because there's other scriptures in here. So for those who receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, if you, your choice when you were baptized under the titles, you received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Your choice. Talk to me. Because I, I have my own person. But I can't use that to dissuade you from what the scriptures are saying. Nobody on here. So I'm saying, <laughs> yes, yes, I understand. I understand. I really do. So I'm going I, by, go ahead. Go ahead. I think the, and the question that was asked is, can we, uh, okay, talk about, um, if you've been, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost baptized in the past. Do you need to be rebaptized in Jesus' name? Uh -huh. So I think the question is asking is, according to the Word of God, is it wrong if you've been baptized under with the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost 
And now you have a better understanding that you should be baptized in Jesus' name. Do you have to be baptized in Jesus' name? And if you aren't baptized in Jesus' name, are you going to hell? I no, that. you're not going to hell. No. Okay. All right. Okay. So the no. so then the question is if you've never so so then if you have never been baptized, then we baptize in the um in, in, in Jesus', Jesus name. name. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's up to that person if they want to be rebaptized over um in in Jesus' name. That's their choice. If I'm getting it. Yes. Okay. It, it, what this you, one. Go ahead. But what Go you're ahead. just showing is you're showing scriptures, breaking it down to explain to people that this is what God had asked for people to do when it came to the baptism. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that, is that correct, Pastor? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Because I understand that question. And the reason I say I understand it is because when I um, came to into the church, um, and I'm going to say came into the church because I was brought up Catholic. And being brought up Catholic, all they did was sprinkle some water on you. Um, when I went to my grandfather's church, I saw people being baptized um, in Jesus' name. And I never got baptized in Jesus' name because I didn't understand. I just knew that I, I wanted a relationship with God. I needed that relationship God, with God. And I felt close to God. I felt when I came to church that it, it's just his presence, me being connected with him. I just felt good about it. I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't. I didn't understand um, or understand about being baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and being baptized in Jesus' name. I didn't understand any of that. I just knew I just wanted to be with Jesus. Um, and so um, is this a place where God knowing our heart apply? Oh, okay, I'll let the pastor answer that. Um, so I understand that question because it wasn't until the pastor and I was speaking and he said, Bay, do you know what you're in? And I'm like, what do you mean? What am I in? And he said, you're apostolic. Um, and no, I, well, no, that's not. Okay. Right. All right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, you know, I, I heard her, uh, Ella Harper. He preached when I, you know, she invited me because I grew up in church of God in Christ. Right. And when El Harbor preached, I knew he was Jesus only. And, you know, back then when I was growing up, it's just like, you know, they, they erred. They know what they were doing. They was in the wrong and blah, blah, blah. And I said, babe, you know, uh, hmm, do you know what you in? She told me, what do you mean? I said, do you know what doctrine or do you know what you are? I mean, <laughs> you should know at least where you are if you if you say you're saved. She said, I don't know what you're talking about. I said, listen. Do you know you're in Jesus only? And she looked at me, she, and you know her answer was, well, this is where I got the Holy Ghost. So what's, you know, what's the difference? And I'm just saying, well, normally you, you know what you're involved with before you, you know, be fully committed. But she said, this is where I got the Holy Ghost, and this is where I'm staying. And here I am, because the Church of God in Christ, the way I was brought up, we, we, we strayed away from them. I mean, we had too much to do with them. So the point I'm making here is when the Lord deals with you about what, okay, can I use the scripture here? They that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be what? Filled. So the spirit of God will lead you in all truth. And the question that, that is brought up here in the, in the chat, this is the place. He knows your heart. Apply. He will, once you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. So 
going back to the question that's been brought up. If you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost under the title or whatever you want to call it, you've been buried. You receive. Now, if the Lord is dealing with you to go down in, in his name, And I'm just looking at the scriptures. So there is no fight. There is no fight. There is no fight. Hallelujah. Because the Lord will reveal himself to you. He will. So uh, am I going to sit up here and say, you, you're not saying you don't have the Holy Ghost or you... No, it, that will never come out of my mouth. Never. But we got the growing grace. Now, can I can I say, my uh, uh, Lady Crothers, are you finished? Prove your point. I'm sorry. I just <laughs> wanted to make sure, I mean, they understood how I approached you. Because um, I, was a, okay. I was a backslider, but I can tell the way the pastor was preaching that he was preaching Jesus only. So go ahead and finish your point, Bay. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was just more or less saying that the baptize, the baptism didn't discourage my relationship with God. Um, the, the baptism didn't hinder my relationship with God. And ever since that question has appeared, I have been searching the scriptures myself and asking God to show me, yeah. um, you know, God, ha have we taught things incorrectly? And what the Lord began to show me through his word was that he said that you have to be baptized of, of the spirit and of the water. But he didn't say how we had to be. Yes, later on, it was shown that um, whoever came to baptize you would, would baptize you um, Pastor, am I saying it incorrectly in the spirit, right? Well, they. I think, um, hear me out. Many people follow John the baptizer, but he plainly told him there was one mightier than I. Right. I only baptize you under repentance. Matter of fact, Paul, in that 19th chapter, came across 12 men. He said, have you received since you believe? But you, you, we could take, we can go to that in a minute, but I want you to finish your point um, to really get a full, a better understanding concerning uh, what's being discussed here about the baptism because this took, this caused a lot of people to leave the church. Uh, so I was going to say that the Lord dealt with me with that. And the only thing God showed me because when I say I I really went before God, I, I've been, I've went through my um my notes um i went to my my study bible i went in prayer and the only thing the lord told me and showed me and i think i spoke to the pastor about this and that was that we need to worry about just being filled with the holy ghost um and that's the bottom line um and not worrying about and i know because of what people have taught it has been a concern, and I truly understand that, and I commend you for asking that question. Um, but that is something that you don't have to worry about. Now, if God deals with you, like God dealt with me, and I got baptized over again because I didn't understand at the time um, what I was um, under, and um, I didn't get a complete understanding of a, the baptism. So I got baptized um, over again because I had a better understanding and I just felt better um, for me. Um, and again, we're looking at man's standards, but we're not looking at what God wants us to do. So Absolutely. I hope that helped. Um, and then Pastor, um, Sister Serena said, I hear you, Pastor. And then she said, is this a place where God knowing our hearts applies? Yes, it does. Because he will lead you in all 
truth. He, he, hear me out. When the Lord said, it's expedient for me to go. And I was in the comforter. He will lead you in all truth. Okay. Who am I to say? If the Lord is dealing with you. In, in this just, just one question. That he is telling you to. Do something. Or be baptized in his name. I am not going to stand in nobody's way. If you want to go down at Jesus name. No, but I'm not going to stop you because you've been baptized under the title or you received the gift of the Holy Ghost under the title because there's no, even in the uh, that 19th chapter, after Paul broke it down to the 12 men, they then they, when it, once they heard it, then they went down in his name, in Jesus' name. And he laid hands on them, and they all received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and see, now, I'm not saying you don't have the Holy Ghost because you went down under the top. No, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. But you as a believer and continuously in the word of God, the Lord will lead you. So, those, if you've been baptized under the titles and you see to get the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. Who am I to stand here and say you ain't got what you got? Because that's why I'm saying the three doctrines apply here. You got to make sure you're being led by the Holy Ghost. Not man doctrines, not the doctrines of devils. Because sure enough, man doctrines will cause you to error. Hallelujah. So, do you? <laughs> yes or no question. The Lord will lead you. He will lead you. Any questions? In, 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 unmute yourself. Talk. Come back. Talk. Because I don't want nobody to think that... <laughs> Well, the pastor said, no, I'm reading you what the Bible is saying. Um, I'm looking at Acts, the 10th chapter, 48 verse, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Well, where else? Well, of course, Acts 2.38. Um, I am not fighting this. I'm not. I am not fighting this. The Lord will lead you. And he'll speak to you. They that call upon the name of the Lord shall be filled. And according to man, this is where people have you on your knees calling on his name over and over and over and over. Call on Jesus. That's man's interpretation. Do you know in the book where every where they said they were tearing, waiting? Tearing means waiting, sitting. <laughs> they didn't know what to do for those 10 days. And we're coming up on, on Pentecost soon, May 19th, I believe that's what, a, what it is. But the point I'm making here is they didn't know what to do other than singing and reading this word. They were waiting to be endued. So uh, that's that's something else. But far as the baptism, don't let that deter you into thinking that because I didn't do it like this person or that. No. And I'm I'll tell you one um, something else that that occurred. Not in our church. Some of the older saints will say because I wasn't there when I heard you. Speak, you're not saved. The devil is a liar. Why do you think Jesus said, I am the vine and ye are the branches? Mm. 
When somebody born, we all know about it. Why you think it says, when one is saved, all the angels in heaven rejoice? Okay, I'm sorry. Because there's, you have to definitely get in his word to see what's going on. Because we're not, we're not going to allow what man doctrine. Okay, can I sidebar for two seconds? And I thank God for the Lord. He, he showed me something. When Adam and Eve was born or made or created, and he gave them one command. He told them not to eat, right? That's the, the theology, the doctrine of God. That's the commandment. Do not eat from the tree of knowledge or good and evil, whatever which one you want to uh, associate it with. Man doctrine, when the, when the enemy questioned Eve, he said, we ain't supposed to touch it or eat from it. That's man doctrine. That's her interpretation. But we all know clearly that the Bible says, do not eat from that tree. Then here come the doctrine of demons. Oh no, you won't die. You shall become as God. Doctrines of demons. He changed it. He's alive from the pit. He, he, he lied. Before and he's lying now. But didn't know the repercussions that will happen if you disobey God. Adam and Eve walk with him, talk with him. Oh, yes, it is, Sister Dolores. And he's lying now. He comes as an angel of light. And his ministers will preach everybody running around here, but there's something wrong here. Having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. But the, the three doctrines apply in the beginning. In the beginning. You shall surely die. Oh no, you're not going to die. You shall become as God. That's the doctrine of devil. Interpretation, I mean, as, as Eve brought it out, we're not even supposed to touch it. But the Lord clearly said, do not eat. Clearly. And, I, and you know, it's been repetitive. And I'm just being real with y'all. As soon as Eve ate, she was immediately separated for Adam. And all that time he was by himself, all them animals and stuff, he still wasn't satisfied. He named every animal. I mean, that came from Adam. But when he saw Eve, yeah, he was excited. So even in this situation, we're, uh, we're not fighting nobody. Nobody. I am not going to be dealing with, who, I mean, who are you going to sit up here and say, you ain't got it or you can't, you didn't do right or blah, 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 because you didn't get it like I did. There's something wrong with this picture. Who are you? But we're not just going to embrace any old thing because the enemy throws some stuff in it. He'll have you thinking that it's all right. Now, if you want to get into um, this is my beloved son, who am I well pleased? John, John the baptizer was the only one who saw that and he heard the voice. But Jesus was fully immersed in the river of Jer Jordan. I'm sorry. If I'm if I'm if I'm running my mouth, y'all, please. <laughs> but I just want to make sure we're not deterring nobody. From receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because you you're gonna be dealing with people that's the enemy got folks in church. That will cause you to 
just like, uh uh, this is too hard. No, that's not us. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm just, I'm just embracing all those. You shoot, the Lord bless you. We don't know about it. those who have the Holy Ghost. Because the Bible does plenty say we, we try the spirit by his word. We try the spirit by the spirit. So we're not, you've been baptized under the title, hallelujah, anyhow. You've been baptized in Jesus' name, hallelujah, anyhow. It just so happened we been, we're under an organization, they implement being baptized in Jesus', Jesus name. So we do so. But I'm not going to sit here and say you in error because you didn't go down to Jesus' name. But the Lord will deal with you. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost under the title, hallelujah. Glory to God. And I like it how, I mean, when you do go to when John baptized Jesus in the river of Jordan, the spirit came down in the form of a dove. It wasn't a dove, but it came in the form of a dove. And light upon him. I can say some more stuff here, but I don't want to mess nobody up here. I really don't. Because it goes deeper than that. So, everybody understand what we discussed concerning that question. Okay. Thank you. I see one. Cause I, I I I want that to be put us. I want I want people to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I think you all probably heard my testimony, and I don't mind saying it because maybe some of y'all didn't know. Well, uh, 1986 when I I uh, came, gave my life back to the Lord. Two of us altar call. Only two went up. I mean, I think the Lord did that on purpose. To prove to me my ideology had nothing to do with who he said. This Baptist young man, he went up first, and I came behind him. The pastor asked him, you know, what do you want? That young man started speaking in tongues. He didn't give an answer, but the answer was in him speaking in tongues. He came from a Baptist church. That put fear in my heart. Here I'm sitting up here, well, wait a minute. <laughs> my mindset was, if you didn't get it, the way I've been taught and led all this time, how can you speak in, how can you speak in tongues? But the Lord let me know that <laughs> we got it all wrong. Speaking in tongues. And they baptized him right then and there. Because they were going back to Acts the 10th chapter. So who am I to judge? Some of us walking, blocking people, thinking that we're doing things. No, uh-uh. We have to search the scriptures. So people come from miles around, come to our church. We find out they baptize in, in under the, no, I, that ain't no, that has nothing to do with us. We still going to preach Jesus Christ and him crucified, okay? So please do not put up a barrier. We're not putting up a barrier. We're not telling nobody they ain't got what they got. You tell us what you have. We're not giving you anything, but you will know 
Like Paul said, I know in whom I believe. And I've been what? Persuaded. Look, he's done so many things for me. You didn't think Paul had to run for his life? He ran up. He ran a, a whole lot of time. He was put in jail more than anybody that I know of for preaching the gospel. And he was the main one persecuting the church. So if the Lord could do it for him, what do you think he can do for us? Jesus. I just want you all to understand something too. The Lord can deal with you right there where you are. And, I, and I'm not saying where you are, but whatever or whenever or however you are. Where you are, your location, it doesn't necessarily mean that you get the Holy Ghost in the church If you seek him with your whole heart, you're going to find him. Mm. I'm sorry for, I, listen, I, I'm, I'm just, I don't want to be in error because we're following the Bible. Hear me out. The Lord is making himself the Lord is making himself plain according to the scriptures. Okay. We'll talk about uh, that next question. Talk about praying slash and laying of our hand or laying hands. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So next week we're going to be talking about can uh, talk. We're going to talk about praying and laying our hands. Okay. So I, I, being courage saints, uh, really, because we're, we're dealing with a lot of misconception, <laughs> we have people doing their jobs. I'm just being led by, I mean, the Holy Ghost. I mean, there's some of the things here I, I really can't fully explain, but I just know him as a healer, okay? Because you're going to always be challenged. Y yes, you are. Thank you, Jesus. I, I'm just looking for the Lord to, when I say complete his work. Like we got children that want to be saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. We don't want to confuse them. And they are watching us. They want to be taught. We have to let them know that the Lord can save them. They don't have to wait till they're old. They can get saved young. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Speaking in tongues, healing. So, hey, as far as I'm concerned, you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? <laughs> that is more important than how you were baptized. That is so important. In the mighty name of Jesus. Well, I love you all. I really do. I'm, I, 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 I think that one, that there is, really we can go into some more scriptures that's leading up to the baptism. 
but who am I to judge? I can only speak for myself. And if those who, who are under my tutelage or, or my flock, I'm responsible for you. I'm responsible for you. And I'm asking the Lord continue to deal with me that I be a faithful. I do this with love. I mean, you know, a lot of times you all know that your pastor don't say too much other than what the Bible says or how the, uh, the spirit of God is leading me to say certain things. But correction is in order. So, uh, I, I do want to say this too. This is also with uh, dealing with Peter. You know, all that time Peter was saying, do you know he's still prejudiced? He was still prejudiced. And Paul had to light him up. So, I don't mind being correct. I really don't. Sometimes, sometimes you have to say, ouch. Well, I'm, so, I'm sorry. It don't feel good. Especially when you're thinking what you're doing was right all this long time. No, when somebody, I mean, it hurts. But we're all subject to one another. Yes, Lord. I got to tell y'all, that's why Byway came out of. Okay. All right. Are there any questions? I'm sorry. Do anybody unmute yourself and speak? Or, you know, Anybody want to say anything? I tend to run my mouth. I do. I'm sorry. But I, I just want this to be an open dialogue. I just don't want to always monopolize the platform. Because if you have any feelings or if you have any uh, thing to say, please. I'm not a bully. And I don't want you all thinking that I am. So if you anybody wants any questions. But the question that we will deal with. Is pr about praying and laying on of hands next week. In Jesus name. Okay. Anybody. And if you want more questions about what we discussed or scriptures to back up what we're discussing, feel free. I have more scriptures to back up what we discussed. Any questions? I love you all. I really do. Continue to pray for your pastor and Lady Carruthers and all those in leadership. Uh, pray for us. Uh, if, if there is no questions, even while I'm talking, you, if you want to ask a question, unmute yourself and, and uh, we'll write him down. We'll come back with an answer next week. Um, Friday, we're going to the Mother Church or for Founders Day. And I do believe it's Friday and Saturday. I just pray for us as we go over there uh, in supportive of the Founders Day. This is dealing with uh, Lawson when he founded the Church of Our Lord and they celebrate and they're having you know music preaching for two days. So if you have any questions, it's on the event the church event. Uh, you can go to the website and 
If you have any questions about that, you can talk to us and we'll try to answer the questions the best way we, we know how. In Jesus' name. Okay, and this is first Sunday coming up. I believe it is May already. It just seemed like we just celebrated uh, the new year coming in. But here it is, May already. But we thank God for his love. Right? Oh, it's all hearts and minds clear? Anybody want to say anything? Oh, well, love you all. Thank God for you. And looking forward to seeing you at the Lord's Sparrow. You know, if he tarry till he come, we see you on Sunday, either on Zoom, I mean, uh, YouTube, or we shall see you in person. Uh, this first Sunday. Matter of fact, it, this month is Mother's Day, right, y'all? Yes, it is. I know it is. Even though y'all quiet, Mother's Day is this month. <laughs> oh, well, we love you all. Thank God for you. And we praise God for you. And we're looking forward to uh, seeing you all. Now, men, for those who are on here, we'll let you know exactly what we're doing Saturday. In Jesus' name, all right? We love you. Uh, let us pray. Father, we thank you as we depart from this place, but never from thy presence. Lord, as we continue to dig into your words, let us continue to seek your face. Let us continue to do what you want us to do. Let us not uh, deviate to our right hand nor to our left, but we are looking unto Jesus, who was the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we thank you for how you blessed us to be able to get a better understanding concerning the baptism, and we're not being here to block nobody. And we know that you are able to do exactly what you want us to do. We love you for many things that, that are untold, but we thank you for what we have heard. Let us continue to seek your face. And then we know we can't do nothing without you. We praise you. We glorify you. This we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we love you. God bless you. And enjoy the rest of your day. In Jesus' name. Got here. Oh. Yeah.